What's up guys, we're back with another educational video and this week we're talking about cold water immersion and fat loss. But first, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment for the algorithm. This topic comes about because there was a new article published in the British Medical Journal that was tweeted about by Andrew Huberman. Now you guys know I've been on Andrew's podcast, really liked him, nice guy, but we have had some like disagreements over certain research and I can't remember the exact tweet, I'll try and find it and put it here, but basically the crux was there was a study that was published showing a decrease in abdominal fat with cold water exposure. So I went and looked up the paper and it's an interesting paper where they looked at male and female soldiers in the Czech army and they looked at a control group which did no cold water immersion or an intervention group that did cold exposure. So they had the intervention group do sessions where they would get into a stream or a lake or a river and immerse all the way up to their neck under six degrees Celsius and stay there for at least 30 seconds. And they said they had them practice this periodically, but they didn't really go into detail about like how often that was, how many days a week. They did say they also had them do at least 30 second cold showers four times a week, at least four times a week for at least 30 seconds. And it had to be under 10 degrees Celsius. So maybe the immersion in the stream, lake or river was four times a week, but they worded it very awkwardly in the paper and I couldn't really tell. And so just saying practice it periodically, I don't really like that because it really needs to be standardized if you're gonna do this kind of experiment. They had them do this for eight weeks. And at the end of the intervention, they looked at body composition and they also looked at like life satisfaction scores and some other metrics of health, like an anxiety questionnaire, so on and so forth, most of it being subjective. And what they found was in the male soldiers, there was a decrease in waist circumference and a decrease in visceral abdominal fat with cold exposure. They also found a reduction in anxiety, reported anxiety, and they found an increase in sexual satisfaction. They also found that a few other subjective markers of life, health, satisfaction were improved. This obviously got tweeted about by Andrew and anything he tweets about gets a lot of engagement. Uh, I've got to say I was not really impressed with the study. The first reason being they did what I consider to be a really, really big snafu, which was I think they biased it right up front. They gave a lecture to the soldiers getting cold exposure about the benefits of cold exposure, but they didn't give it to the control group. If you are comparing two groups, you need to give them that same information up front because you are inviting the placebo effect by doing this. So by telling them that cold exposure has benefits, especially when it comes to the subjective stuff, you are biasing them immediately that they are going to see improvements. But placebo isn't just subjective stuff. Placebo can actually change physiology. In fact, in many cases, they've shown that the placebo effect can be as powerful as pharmaceutical drugs. If you tell people there's going to be benefits, then they'll likely have benefits. What they could have done was show all the soldiers, including the control group, the information on cold exposure and its purported benefits. And then at least that way, the control group that's not having cold exposure done will have been equally biased by that. In my opinion, they probably shouldn't have given either group that lecture. They probably should have just said, there's no danger to it. And here's the information showing there's no, there's no danger to cold exposure to get them to buy into it. But telling them that there's benefits, I really believe that is going to strongly bias the intervention group towards believing that they're gonna have benefits. Now, the other thing I thought was weird was when they looked at the subjective scores, they pooled the data from males and females because in pretty much all the subjective scores, they didn't see any differences between males and females. But when it came to the body composition data, they did not pool it, they kept it separate between males and females. And this reduction in waist circumference and visceral abdominal fat you saw in males, but you didn't see it in females. And so why did they separate that data? Now, it could be 
that men and women have different body compositions at baseline, which they do, but they still could have expressed it as a percent change. So if they expressed it as a percent change, maybe there would have been a difference, maybe there wouldn't have been, but they should have checked to see if there was a difference between males and females, and if there wasn't, they should have pooled that data as well, because in my opinion, it is inappropriate to selectively pool data and then not pool data based on seeing certain outcomes. The other thing is they didn't control their diets. And it is possible that if they're reading about the benefits of cold exposure, that they change some dietary habits based on the fact that they thought they were getting healthier. We know this about people who exercise. People who exercise tend to start improving their diet when they start exercising as well because of that healthy user sort of bias. I think it's a study that warrants further investigation, but I do not think that it was properly controlled. I do think they introduced bias in a way that quite frankly, I think the journal should have been more discerning about and made them give a better explanation. And finally, I'm just not convinced by these small differences. I mean, there was a 4% purported decrease in anxiety, a 5% increase in sexual satisfaction. I mean, those subjective scores could easily be influenced by just thinking that there's a benefit to cold exposure. And then the differences in abdominal fat were about 5.5%. But again, I, I don't know if they examined the data correctly because they pooled some data, but not other data. And it seems to be somewhat selective. Again, I'm not saying they did that on purpose. Sometimes scientists do these things without realizing. And perhaps they did try pooling the data and they found that it was different. I don't know, but they didn't say that in the paper. So they really should have gone to more depth. And quite frankly, the reviewers should have dinged them on this and had them explain it further. I will say cold exposure does seem to have some benefits. It does seem to decrease inflammation. It does seem to decrease soreness. So if you're an athlete who needs to recover for an event, I think cold exposure can have some benefits. We have previously talked on this channel about how cold exposure or cold water immersion can blunt or attenuate hypertrophy. So it depends on what you're using it for. It has some benefits, it has some downsides. If you like doing it, absolutely do it. Some people purport that they feel a lot better, that they have better mental clarity. There's not really compelling evidence in the literature for that. But again, if you like doing it, absolutely do it. But frankly, I think a lot of people like doing it because they like posting it on their social media, because people go, wow, you're such a biohacker. You get in cold water, yay. Um, what I would say is if that you're posting more videos of you doing cold plunges on social media than you are of actually doing exercise, I think you're missing the point. But hey, if you like it, go ahead and do it. All right, guys, if you like research breakdowns like this, make sure you're subscribed to my research review reps. Every month, we break down five studies exactly like this in the realm of fitness and nutrition, and we put them into a format that's palatable and easy to understand, and you get access to all our archived issues, and you get our 50-page ebook on how to read research. So make sure you click the link in the description and sign up for that, and I'll catch you guys next week.